Perfect. Excellent. Very good, Mickey. Thank you very much. So <laughs> you were giving some examples of complex systems. You said the human brain, then you said electronic, electronic circuits or systems. Mm, could be the the climate systems too. The, the what, excuse me? The climate. Climate, yeah, climate, climate system. Absolutely, that's very complex. Uh, another example of complex systems, uh, bi biological evolution. That's very complex, biological evolution. How does, uh, how does certain species evolve? Or how do uh, species evolve, right? There are many species that have evolved. For example, the mammoth mm -hmm. became an elephant. Yeah. People claim, I don't know if I agree or not, <laughs> that we come, we descend from the monkey or the apes. I don't know if that is true or not, but there are people who claim that we descend directly from, <laughs> from the monkeys, right? Yeah. Uh, the evolution is, is a complex system. Uh, other examples, well, the traffic flow. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's so these are examples of complex systems. Um, what is the characteristic of a complex system, Mickey? What is characteristic of complex systems? Um, well, it could be that uh, the complex system uh, is like is like not something. Uh, well, how can I say it? Well, it's something that have different, uh, like connections. I think that uh, normally are in change. Okay, I believe you said a very key key word, very cru a crucial word, connection. So it is interconnectedness. There is an interconnectedness, right? Yeah. Uh, and this nodes well they interconnect in various nodes like a network like a power grid let's mm -hmm. suppose that you you have a, a generation system where you generate electricity but then you have to distribute the electricity among the houses and to distribute the electricity to, to house first you take it in the three power lines one two and three power lines to a city, right? This is the city. And then the city becomes a whole grid because then you distribute it to the hospitals, to schools, convention centers, houses, etc. right? It's a grid that is interconnected. This is a complex system, exactly the way what you said, right? That is an interconnected. So this is a power grid. So power grids are also power grid are also complex systems, right? The brain is the same. And then you have the various nodes, right, in which they connect. Various nodes, nodes, nodes. Like the human brain too, right, Mickey? Yeah. Okay. So there are two advocates. There are many more, but two which are very, very famous and very incredible uh, discoveries or uh, researches they have done. Uh, and they are uh, a French guy by the name of Edgar Morin or Morin. And the other is Rolando Garcia, who was the mentor and tutor of my current tutor. He's mm -hmm. my tutor in Aguascalientes, worked with Rolando Garcia, a guy from Argentina, extremely bright and he worked on complex systems. And there is a great book written by um, Maureen Moran on complexity. Let's take a quick look at this book, Mickey, please. Yeah. And see what he says about that. I'll share it. And let's see just the index. We're going to see the index. Um, let me share this with you. Complexity. All right, let's just... Take a look at the contents here. Oh, oops. Complexity. 
Okay, let's please read the index and see what you think. Yes, sure. <clears throat> Forward, Edgar Morant, Path of Complexity. Alfonso yeah. Montuari. Yeah. Blind Intelligence, Becoming Aware, The Pathology of Knowing, Blind Intelligence. The Need for Complex Soul. Okay. Complex Pattern and Design. In America, System Theory, Open Systems, Information Organization, Organization, Self-Organization, Complexity, Subject and Object, Coherence and Epistemological Opening, Ciencia Nueva, For a Unity of Science, Integration of the Realities, Banished by Classical Science, Beyond Classical Eater or Alternatives, the paradigmatic turning point. Okay. Uh, what? What? First of all, before we continue, when you read these two uh, chapters, for example, the first one that talks about blind intelligence. Of course, we don't know yet, or we haven't read this book. But what comes to your mind? What do you imagine that is going to show, or represent, or explain, or talk about? Hmm. Well, with the first chapter uh, called uh, Becoming Aware, uh, I don't know, probably I think that the majority of humans, uh, we have like certain types of intelligence and in occasions we are not aware of that. So probably <laughs> the first chapter talks about it. And, um, but to be honest, I'm not sure. <laughs> okay, but I think you're going to be very close. I haven't read the book either. But there is a guy by the name of uh, Howard Gardner, Howard mm -hmm. Gardner, and I'm sure that you have read about his multiple intelligence. Mm -hmm. You read about it, right? Yeah, a little bit. Multiple intelligences. And there is a chart that basically represents all the types of intelligence that we normally develop mm -hmm. or that we all have, right? Let's see, copy image. Let me paste that here. I'm gonna do a new and that's here. So okay, here is I don't know if I copied it correctly. No, maybe not. This one here. Copy image. Yeah, that is uh, oops, it doesn't look too good. Let me look for a better multiple intelligence, this one here. Okay, I think this is better. All right, what you're saying is very um, adequate and that totally, okay, here. You, you Are you familiar with this uh, topic, Nikki? Yes, sure, yeah. Okay, how would you explain each of these intelligences by Garner, multiple intelligence? Mm -hmm. Um. Well, uh, all human beings, uh, we have different types of intelligence. Probably I have uh, a certain type of intelligence more developed than others. And and for example, which ones do you think are more like in your case? Well, uh, like three months ago, I did a, a test. <laughs> and the test appears that my, well, that, that, that the type of intelligence that I have more developed uh, were the musical and the intrapersonal. Really? Oh, yeah. That's, that's amazing. Very nice. So that's one intrapersonal. What does it mean to have musical or intrapersonal intelligences more developed than other ones? Um, well, yeah, for example, uh, when you have the musical intelligence uh, more developed is when you try to find like, uh, for example, the rhythm in the songs or you try to understand the instruments or um, your focus on what you're listening. Probably I think that the musical intelligence uh, is related to the uh, knowledge style uh, that is more uh, like auditive because you are more 
I would say like more uh, sharp to the sounds could be. And in the case that it, interpersonal, uh, well, I read that um, when you have this intelligence uh, more more developed, uh, is when you have like the mm, uh, how can I say it? That it's easier to you to understand what is happening inside you, you know, that for example, inside you, have, you, inside you, it's like an introspection. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's the word introspection. Yeah, that it's sometimes <laughs> uh, people can know the problems of others, but it is difficult to recognize their own problems. And when you have this intelligence more developed, uh, well, it is easier to determine what is happening in you. And, and yeah, obviously, all the multiple intelligence are important. Uh, I think that uh, all human beings have the different multiple intelligence. Obviously, uh, one more developed than others. But, but yeah, it is important to use uh, and understand the intelligence that you have developed and in the others that you're not. Well, try to develop it. Be, develop it too. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Well, connected with this and is related to the topic of uh, uh, complex systems, there is a specialist called John Dewey that developed a chart on learning, learning and memory. Let's see if there is this chart here. I just saw it, if not... I will retrieve it from my other place. Let's see if I see it here. No, no, I think it is not here. So let me look it up. Well, look it up later. There is a chart by John, it's not John D. 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 Chart, I think I read it. Yeah, this is a chart. This is it. This is it. Let's see what you think about this chart, Mickey, because it's truly interesting, truly interesting how mm -hmm. this guy, M. Dewey, refers to the learning ability to, for example, here is this, the learning pyramid. Can you see it or is it too small? Yeah, I can see it. Okay. What do you elaborate from this? If you analyze this chart, what, how do you understand this? this chart well probably is the uh, like the amount of knowledge that you can acquire with the different uh, methods or processes for example uh, i know that when you teach something to others probably it will be easier to to learn it because <laughs> you are uh, teaching it to other people and yeah well, I know that. So probably are the, the different percentages are like the amount of knowledge that you, that you can acquire depending on the activity that you're doing. Right. Actually, it's not only to acquire the knowledge or the, the yeah, the knowledge, but mm -hmm. to retain it. Uh, to retain it. To okay. retain the knowledge. Retain it. Retain. Retain knowledge. Mm-hmm. Let's say that you learn how to, you read something about the brain. Mm -hmm. The brain has two hemispheres, right? <laughs> you read that in a book. The yeah. brain has two hemispheres. Well, if you read it, if you, if you are in a lecture, you listen to that in a lecture, well, you will remember that, the 5% of that information, let's say. In this case, it's just one piece of information, right? Mm -hmm. If you read it, you retain 10% of all the information for audiovisuals to retain 20. But if you teach others that the brain has two, two hemispheres, what's going to happen is that you're going to retain 90% of all the information that you receive. If you teach it, you mm -hmm. retain 90%. What do you think of this chart by, by John Dewey? Yeah, um, it is so interesting. I... One time I read about it, but it's the same. <laughs> Only yeah. you retain one part of what you read, and 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 yeah, it's important to understand if we want to develop a, a certain 
uh, skill or cer certain activity, I think that it's important to to understand how the learning pyramid works and how we retain the knowledge. So yeah, it is it is interesting. Right now, can you more or less recall and retrieve how you learned math? Was that a linear learning? Or was that skipping, for example, from arithmetic, you learned calculus, then you went back to geometry, then you decided to learn analytic geometry, then you say, no, I'm going to go back and read some uh, trigonometry. Or was that a linear uh, learning with uh, different stages, gradual and sequential learning? In that case, in the case of maths, how was the learning in that case, Mickey? Uh, well, it was gradual. And, and linear, yeah, yeah, obviously because uh, you must have like the like the you basics, see. understand the <laughs> the rest of the topics, and if you don't have the basic, well, it will be uh, more difficult to you to to understand. Yes, exactly, exactly, exactly. Actually, there is a chart. What you say is exactly right. How we learn math. And let me, I hope I don't lose, uh, hope I don't lose much resolution. I'm gonna increase this 250. Well, I'm losing some, some, some resolution. Let me see if there is another chart by Vygotsky. The idea that he has, okay, this is another chart. Let me post it. Still small. Let's see if it can be seen. Can you see it, or uh, it's a, a bit blurry? Um, it is blurry, but I can see it. All right. How do you explain this chart, Mickey? Byte codes, byte codes, keys, etc. Mm -hmm. How do you interpret <coughs> this chart? <coughs> Well, I can uh, interpret it in the way that is the like the process in the way how we learn uh, in occasions when we are some, studying something new. Uh, we cannot do it because you know we don't have the practice or we don't have the knowledge to do it. And obviously, when you have more practice, um, you can do it with the help with with help with other, of others. And then when you really acquire the the skill or the knowledge, you can do it by yourself. And exactly. then it comes a new a new knowledge or a new a new skill. Skill, skill or ability. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. Very good. Very good example. Okay, well, the, what what happens in math? Let's say that I want to teach we I mean I wanna teach my 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 let's suppose that I have a daughter that is five, six, seven years old. And mm -hmm. I want to teach your calculus. Well, she would not understand, not mm -hmm. even with Einstein. If Einstein mm -hmm. is present and he tries to teach my daughter that is five, six, seven years old, she wants to teach him to teach her calculus, integral calculus, she will not learn, not even with the help of Einstein, because she needs to do it gradually. First, what does she need to learn in, in stage one? What does she need to learn? Well, she needs to learn how to add the numerical system, right? She needs to learn how the numbers work. The basics. Mm -hmm. the basics right. Know the basics. Know the basics. Um, in math, we all know that the basics is knowing how to add, how to subtract, adding, subtracting. What else is a basic operation? Mm, could be... Hmm. Multi multiplying. Perfect. And the last one? Dividing. Dividing. Perfect. Those are the four basic operations. Once you learn that, you are able to go to the to the next stage, right? You do the basic operations, adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing. Uh, you learn how to square a number. Squaring a number. Wearing a number. So if they tell you um, square a number, what is, what is squaring a number exactly? What is what is that? Well, 
you need to square it. What it means is that if they give you a tree here, you know that the area, the surface, is going to be the square of the side, right? It's going to be three times three. Yeah. Right? That's the square. Three times three is the surface. Mm -hmm. And the, the opposite is also true. If they give you a square that is 16 square meters, they teach us, or we're supposed to learn, that if the surface is equal to 16 square meters, um, you need to find the side, the, 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 what is the, what's the dimension of the side, right? Mm -hmm. And we both know that it is four. That four. is very basic. Yeah. They teach us that in elementary school. You know the basics of math. They, but, but only then you gradually acquire the knowledge until you're able to, to learn high math or applied math for finance, for economics, for commerce, for engineering, for medicine, for all multiple applications. But you need to know the, the, the basics. So you go step by step, and that's what Vygotsky says when he shows how to how to how to teach this. Um, so, how complex do you think the learning process can become, or how simple? What well, this is an interesting question. How simple or complex the learning process can be in, in your personal opinion this is objective it's just what you think it's just an idea there is no right or wrong answer it's just how simple or complex can the learning process be Mickey in your opinion mm. well I think that depending and depending too of the of the person or the resource where you are when you are acquiring the the knowledge because for example i remember in the elementary school i think it was in the first year i learned uh, a lot of uh, well the basics of math and and at that time uh, i was prepared <laughs> for the year that i was uh, cursing <coughs> but then in the next year uh, they changed us they changed us the the teacher and and the teacher didn't focus too much in math. So uh, the learning process that I had with the first teacher, uh, it was, uh, well, it became more complex because I didn't have the attention in in that learning process. In, and then obviously in the third grade was was difficult to, to all the group to understand the, the you know, the next level of, of the math. So I think that depending of the teacher, depending on where you are acquiring the information, and and I think that depending depends of the practice that you give to that. Because for example, I, I always believe that math is just practicing, practicing, and practicing. And if you don't practice enough, well, probably will be uh, more complex to learn it. Yeah. I think practice is very important, but also is is it is something very important is to understand the logic of what we memorize. Uh, what do I refer to? Well, I refer to something in geometry that we learned when we were kids mm -hmm. in secondary school, in junior high, that was extremely simple to understand if they had only taught us correctly, right? But they didn't. Unfortunately, in my case, they didn't teach me correctly. So. I suffer a lot trying to understand the meaning of something so basic as this one, as this figure is incredibly simple and incredibly basic. And you will not believe how many people have difficulties with this. Um, as a math teacher, mm -hmm. I have lots of that. Well, your dad is a math teacher. I think your uncle, Bobby, and so you, you have lots of math teachers in your family. Yeah. And you're very, very smart. And but, but there, there was a difficulty in my case in, in junior high, understanding something extremely simple, which recently, and I finished my career as an engineer, and something which should have been learned in um, junior high, 
I just learned it recently. And mm -hmm. I get a little bit upset because of the simplicity of this concept. Mm -hmm. And it is this. Well, let me just change the color or something. More festive. Okay, I'll do that. I'll just put the frame here. Okay, here. And oops. I don't know what I'm doing. Okay, here. And the contour is going to be black. That. Okay. You want to. If you know the dimensions of this side, which is called A, let me increase the size. This is not a math class. It's just an idea of yeah. how to understand formulas that are given to us to memorize without understanding how harmful mm -hmm. that is. Because our teachers, well, my teachers, told mm -hmm. me, let's memorize A plus B, A plus B square, and they give you a formula that you need to memorize, and then you struggle to memorize it. Right? Is a squared, remember? A squared, a squared, gosh, a squared plus two times, remember what? Two times hmm. a b, yeah, plus b. b squared mm -hmm. that's it and that is extremely simple if you memorize it right well not extremely simple actually it's the opposite you need to memorize it and then students forget and then you say how can i forget something so simple mm -hmm. and people forget because it has no meaning for them it's just a formula you say well i don't really understand what it means mm -hmm. and you go throughout your whole career without understanding because they didn't care to explain it. Maybe they didn't even know, right? It was just a formula. Mm -hmm. But if you notice, the square uh, is really, really simple, right? Oh, I'm sorry, A plus B square. So, uh, the square of this. Mm -hmm. Okay? You agree with this? Yeah. Well, A, uh, A squared is this, the square of A. You have a square here. You agree with that? Mm -hmm. It's a little square. And you can place this here or here. Actually, it should be like square like this. I'm not, okay, let's suppose that that is the square, right? Mm -hmm. That is A squared. So it's very simple. If you have this line, which I'm gonna draw and give me a color that you like, any color that you like. Mm. Green. Green, okay. What is the dimension, the dimension of this green line? What, what, what is the dimension? What is the measure? If A is this small thing here, mm -hmm. I'm going to draw in, in red is A, I'm going to draw in red. I'll put red here, right? That line in red is A. Mm -hmm. Do you agree with that? Yeah. That little line. And then give me a color, please, for B. The oh, Give me a color, please, for the dimension of B. Any color that you like. Mm, orange. Orange, all right. B is orange. So the complete side green, the green line is A plus B, right? Do you agree with that? Yeah. A plus B. A plus B is the green line. I'm going to put that in green. And it's extremely simple. And well, all that it says is that the square of this thing here, A plus B, the square of this line, mm -hmm. square of this line, the, the green line, mm -hmm. the square of this green line is the, is the complete square here, right? This complete square. You agree with that, right? Yeah. That is the square. And each of the terms, this one here, what is the what is the value of this square here? Let's call it. Yeah. I'm gonna make it dark. I'm gonna put red here in the contour, and inside I'm gonna put red too. Okay. What is the dimension of the red of the red uh, square, Mickey? How do you calculate that square? Mm. 
the surface, the area of that square? Um, it's just a square. What is the dimension of the side? This dimension. A. Exactly. So that is the, the side, right? So what is the area? A square. Exactly. Perfect. Exactly. Well, that is so incredibly simple that I cannot understand how I went through school without knowing this uh, basic. I just memorized it. Of course, I passed, but uh, yeah. incredibly simple, right? Now, let's go to the blue square. Mm -hmm. What is the area of the blue square? Mm -hmm. B square. B square, right. And you, where do you have that? How do you have that here, right? B square. That Now everything makes sense. Oops, I'm sorry. B square. I'm probably you knew this because maybe you had better teachers, but no, no, <laughs> I, I didn't know this when I was well ever until very recently. B square, and then let's talk about the gray rectangles. What is the dimension? I'm gonna choose another color of this. Um, let me see, violet line. I'm gonna put a violet line here. This violet line, oh, well, blue, it's just supposed to be violet. Here, okay. Violet. What is the dimension of this violet line? Mm. Should be the same as this, right? Because it's a B square. Right. B. So the dimension is B. Mm -hmm. So that is a rectangle. And what is the area of a rectangle? Mm. No, my bad. This, the, the area of this rectangle, I'm going to draw the color, uh, what, well, violet. <laughs> it's a mm. pretty weird color, right? It's a nice color. <laughs> oh, okay, nice, okay, let's see that it's nice, all right. Nice color. Okay, so what is the area of this rectangle? How do you calculate the area of a rectangle? Is the base. Base, which is A, mm. times? Times uh, the height. Yeah, exactly, which is? B. B, perfect. So you have A times B, perfect. And now let's be fair. And let's do the same with this other rectangle here. Mm -hmm. You agree with that? Mm, yeah, it's the formula, uh, 2AB. Exactly, is the formula here. AB here, you have A times B. And so it's, it's incredibly simple. You have one square, which is A square. Uh -huh. I'm going to put that in red. And the red. You have a blue square, which is this one here. I'm sorry. You have this one, which is B square. Uh -huh. And then you have two times this rectangle here, right? Yeah, and that's the formula. Mm -hmm. Well, you, you, you say, well, but that's very basic. Well, yeah, it's extremely basic, extremely simple. But you cannot believe how many people, engineers, even doctors in math, believe me, doctors don't know where this formula comes from. Because the learning process was just to memorize, not to understand. What do you think of this situation? Not this specific, but the whole situation of learning by memory instead of learning, learning by understanding. Yeah, well, I think that it's something that uh, that occurred to, to all students because at least one time we had one teacher that he wanted or she wanted to, uh, that we memorize uh, <laughs> the all, all the book or all the formulas. But something, something that that happened to me, uh, for example, in math, is that I memorize it. But for example, if you uh, give me an exercise <laughs> at this moment, uh, probably it is so possible that I cannot solve for the same because I memorize it. But I don't really. I memorize it for the for the exam. That will be. I memorize it for the exam. I memorize it for the test, and and then <laughs> I forgot it, and. And I think that is for the reason that I, I didn't understand uh, from when it comes, 
you know uh, i just memorized the formula but i, I didn't know uh, where the formula comes and why we are doing that formula and i think that that's the that's the issue because in occasions we memorize without without learning we're just memorizing without understanding right without understanding yeah sometimes they develop acronyms for you to understand more easily and that is a good technique actually that's very good when they tell you uh, uh they tell you mickey we're gonna deliver the merchandise in the us and it's gonna be ddp and then you say oh delivery duty paid you know delivery duty paid what does that mean that the tax for delivering a merchandise has already been paid. You cover that, right? You send your sneakers to the US. Well, I don't know if they have taxes in the US, but let's say that you send that to Russia. Excuse mm -hmm. me. And they, yeah. they cover, ta they charge taxes to import merchandise, right? So if you're gonna deliver that in Russia, you will need to pay taxes. If you say delivery duty paid, I pay it. I cover that tax. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I prefer to cover it. So they pay the. So you you deliver, delivery duty unpaid. But mm -hmm. then what happens is that you understand the concepts because somebody explains you. They give you an example, and then you need to provide another example, right? Um, for example, they would your teachers would normally tell you, okay, Mickey, give me an example of a country where you would ship, delivery duty paid, delivery duty paid. Where would you ship with this Inco terms? To which country and why? Um, How would you respond to this? Well, probably um, United States, will we? Yes. Why do you want to deliver DDP to the US? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's right. It's, the answer is correct. But why, why do you want to do it? Well, at the beginning, because we have the, the MEC. So probably the amount of taxes that I will pay uh, will be less in comparison with other countries. And because, well, I'm imagining that <laughs> the offer that is in the other, that the demand that, uh, of the product that we are uh, exporting is um, is increasing in that in that country, and that's why I choose United States. I don't know. <laughs> for example, avocados okay, in Super Bowl for guacamole. Well, perfect. It's perfect example. Uh, very good. Good job. Good, good. Good. And now, to which country would you deliver delivery duty unpaid? That you say, well, I don't want to cover the taxes. The importer has to cover them. What, what would you give us an example if they ask to which country and why do you want to deliver delivery the duty unpaid? Well, probably in countries that are uh, uh, more far. Uh, I don't know. Probably China. That probably the risks that we have uh, exporting that product are are high. So at the moment that you are. Uh, well, you're saying that is delivery duty unpaid. Well, the buyer has like the compromise to the commitment to uh, to see how the mer merchandise are is um, well, yeah, the 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 status of the merchandise and and you and the buyer is aware of the taxes that needs to pay. I don't know. It's but I think that depending too of the product, right? Because there are products that obviously, uh, at the moment that you're exporting, they pay more taxes and others and don't. So, right. analyze. Exactly. But notice how important it is that you have examples, concrete examples, to fully understand the concepts that somebody teaches you, right? So, your teacher would tell you, DDP, okay, give examples. Why would you do this? What happens if this or that? And they give you constraints, possibilities. And so it's difficult for you to ever forget DDP or DDU or whatever they teach you, right? Yeah. 
because you are you apply it as uh, John Dewey was saying in the other, or if they tell you, okay, Mickey, I need you to please uh, present or help me with a <laughs> talk with a with a group about commerce and inco terms. So you explain them. You want to give them examples, and that's probably the best way for you to learn something, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, at the moment you are giving uh, examples. Well, I think that your mind is start to think <laughs> by itself, and it's not just listening and it's not just memorizing because you are like seeing a real situation when you, when when you need to apply that knowledge. So I think that it helps to retain the knowledge. Right. Exactly. Perfect. Perfect. Ex excellent. Well, when we talk about complex systems, what happens is something very similar. Right? You have a grid, or you make a grid of ideas that interconnect with one another. You have this idea. They are not necessarily linear, but they have interconnection points. And these points, when they <coughs> interconnect, they what happens is that you're... Uh, you, you understand complex terms more easily, and all of a sudden, what seems to be complex becomes easy. Right? There, there are paradoxes which are sometimes difficult to understand, but if you find these connection dots, which are the nodes, like an electronic circuit or an electrical circuit or whatever, you find the dots where, where concepts interconnect, then what used to be complex becomes quite simple. You just develop a grid, like in this case, we have a grid, and this grid of concepts, ideas, etc., becomes easily understandable. And that's what it's all about, right? Grid with various nodes. What do you think of this concept of interconnections, Mickey? What, what, what do you think about this? Um, well, I think that the, the complexity in systems uh, involves different uh, interconnections. So uh, it's like, well, it's, it's a grid with various um, how can I say it? Like with various uh, subjects that probably uh, all the subjects in uh, in together form a, form the complete grid. So um, yeah, that everything is interconnected. In few words. Perfect. Exactly. Exactly right. Very good. Let's <laughs> make a grid of the uh, economic system. Economic system. All right, so we have an economic system, which is a grid, and we're going to interconnect all the elements, which are elements that you consider are part of the economic system, which are the elements that you would say, well, this is part of the economic system. This element is part of the economic system. There should be many elements which conform the economic system. So, which are elements of the economic system that you consider that this is an element? Mm, probably the economic system. Well, we referred to the uh, different uh, type economies or, or, for example, I don't know, the international trade, the Offer, demand. Well, they, those are all elements. So international trade, international trade is a very important element of the economic system. That's one of the elements. Absolutely. Market. The market. Well, the market is another element. The market. What else? Mm. It could be the offer and demand. Offer and demand, 
offer and demand products. Mm. Uh, could be goods and services? Mm, absolutely, yes, goods and services. Goods and services. Very good, yes, absolutely. Goods and services. Probably the currencies? Currencies, yeah, because you need to convert from what to what? Mm, dollars to Mexican pesos. <laughs> <laughs> or euros or rubles or whatever, right? Yeah, yes. But... The currencies is an element which is very important. We can put it everywhere, right? We can just move it up or down. What else is an element of the economic system? Mm. Could be mm. I don't know if capital could be an element of the economic system. Capital, I, I believe it is very important. Actually, I think it's crucial because you need to invest a capital to create any kind of uh, enterprise. Let's say that you want to start uh, a business of houses. Well, you need to acquire some capital to invest in building a house or 10 houses, and then you sell the houses and you get some profit, et cetera, right? Mm -hmm. But then you need the capital to invest, to create uh, any kind of infrastructure. To create an infrastructure, capital is required. So the concept that you mentioned is crucial, Mickey. Well, in that case, I think that uh, mm, human capital could be other? Human capital, of course. Human capital or human resources. Human resources, yeah. That is uh, crucial because at the end, even with the best robots, the, peop the, the people are the ones who carry out some duties. Mm -hmm. Most of the duties, planning, organizing, etc. Human capital, goods and services, market offer, demand, currencies. What else do you consider are, is part of uh, the economic system? Mm. Could be banks. Banks, which is uh, financial institutions, right? There are banks, but there are other financial institutions. So let's call them in general. Financial institutions. institutions. Banks are part of the financial institutions. Uh, credit companies, which mm -hmm. are banks, but also some other companies give you money. Institutions, in financial institutions. And let me ask you, you consider that the government is also a yeah. key player. Mm -hmm. why, why do you think the government is a key player? It is, but why? Uh, well, because depending on the country where the government establish certain rules and criteria to follow and and obviously certain decisions that the government could take affects positive or negative to the economy. Absolutely. Well, well here we have a summary of the economic system, the grid, how all the elements interact. And then you can probably say, well, this element maybe not play a role very important, or we don't have this element. But then we need to interconnect the capital with financial institutions. Well, you establish a credit line, you establish a connection. And they say, well, there. Right? <laughs> now, financial institutions are connected with the capital. Currencies are connected with the offer and demand, with the market. So everything seems to be interconnected here. Yeah. That is very positive. And this international trade is connected with offer and demand, is mm -hmm. connected with currencies, is connected with uh, financial institutions. So everything interconnects directly or indirectly, right? And this makes a complex system. But once you're able to put this in a map, in a mind map like this, mind map, what is complex all of a sudden becomes simple. Mm -hmm. uh, 
Well, these guys, uh, Edgar Moran and Rolando Garcia, were two geniuses, two great small guys who work on complex complex systems quite a bit, and uh, that's basically the whole idea of a complex system. is much more than that, of course, but. Uh, Let's see a bit more of what they found. Yeah. Here. In complexity. All right. Let's go to the chapter three, the paradigm, the paradigm of complexity, page section three. Mickey, can you read it, please? The, yeah, the paradigm of complexity. <laughs> uh, the paradigm of simplicity order and disorder in the universe, self-organization, autonomy, complexity and completeness, reason, rationality and res rationalization, the necessity of macro concepts, three principles, forward complexity. Okay. Uh, what do you think this chapter includes and what it talks about and why do you think this is so interesting? <clears throat> Well, of course, I'm talking uh, since the <laughs> uh, knowledge, or I don't know how to say it, but um, <clears throat> mm, I think that in occasions we have paradigms for everything, and uh, we have paradigms too for what is complex and what is not. So probably uh, this chapter talks about the importance to have uh, uh, the rationality to understand that probably everything is complex and, and at the same time it could not be complex, everything depending of the way that we're seeing it and understand it. I don't know. Yeah, it makes total sense. It makes total sense. And actually, it's a very good intuitive thought and I, I i pretty much agree with what you're saying let let me go to this uh, page 37 and see what it reveals to us okay let's just read a little bit of it to just to confirm if it is true what you were thinking it was going to be about and i'm pretty sure there's going to be at least very very similar with 537 the paradigm of complexity uh, let's read just a little bit of this, please, can we? Mm -hmm. We must not believe that the question of complexity is only being asked today because of some new scientific developments. We must see complexity where it generally might seem absent, in daily life, for example. This particular complexity has been perceived and described in the novels of the 19th century and also beginning of the 20th century. During this same era, Science was trying to eliminate the individual and the singular, retaining only general laws and simple and close identities. Science even rejected time from its, from its vision of the world. The novel, on the contrary, Balzac in France, Dickens in England, show us singular beings in their context and in their time. The novel show us that the most ordinary of lives is, in fact, a life in which everyone plays several social roles depending on whether she or he is at home, at work, with friends, or with strangers. We see that each being has a multiplicity of identities, a multiplicity of personalities in the, in the self, a world of fantasies and dreams accompany, accompanying life. For example, the theme of the internal monologue, so powerful in Faulkner's writing, is itself a part of this complexity. This inner speech uh, this constant talk is revealed by li literature, by the novel, which at the same time also reveals to us how little one knows of oneself. We call this self-deception. Lying to ourselves, we know ourselves only as an appearance of itself. We are mistaken about ourselves. Even the most sincere writers, such as Jean-Jacques Rousseau and Chateaubriand, always forgot in the effort to be sincere, something important about themselves. Well, this reminds me of something that you mentioned recently, 
Uh, and that is the self knowledge, right? Intrapersonal, intra, personal uh, intelligence, in which you rank high. Remember that you rank high in two of the various intelligences, which of course you're going to be ranking high in many of them. But you <laughs> said that you, in musical intelligence, you ranked high. Mm -hmm. You also ranked high in interpersonal intelligence. Yeah. Well, what it says here is that some people, most people, lack or don't have this interpersonal intelligence that mm -hmm. is actually called a self-deception. When we lie about ourselves, we don't become so sincere with ourselves, right? Yeah. We, we don't tend to admit that, oh, I'm so flabby, I need to make more exercise. I <laughs> see, I'm in good shape, I'm just fine. <laughs> oh, people will not notice, or uh, I'm starting to age, I'm starting to show wrinkles here or here or there, or, or whatever, right, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes I think, no, I'm, I'm pretty pretty smart at this. But then you notice that some basic things that I'm supposed to know, like this example of math, I didn't know it until 15 years ago when right? I finished school 30 years ago. And so this ability to, to remove barriers, either emotional or pride or whatever it is, to find the truth and, and to find the self mm -hmm. is very important, which is what you what you you have this ability, right? To to know exactly your true self. Yeah. Right? And how easy, how difficult is that? And I'm surprised by this ability that you have. And I'm, I'm, I'm very proud that, that you have this ability. How did you come to have it? It's, it's, not, it's not something extremely, extremely common. It's kind of uncommon, at least in the people that I know. For me, I'm sure it's not quality of the top qualities. <laughs> but you have it. How did you come to have it or to develop or to discover it, Nikki? We got, I think I lost, I lost Nikki. I don't, if, I don't know if I lost you, Nikki, are you there? You froze. The power went out. Uh, we have Mickey who lost connection due to a power failure. So I think we're going to end the session and continue tomorrow. See you then on Friday. Tomorrow is great. Okay, well, there we have, there we have uh, Mickey. We had a power shortage. I'm just uh, writing with him that everything is perfect for tomorrow, set up for tomorrow. So, okay, well, let's finish the session here today. Thank you.